that you guys are here this morning. I can't wait to introduce you to Denise. Um, I've known Denise for a long time when I started working at Bear Creek in 2000. Denise was here and she was one of the main teachers that started working at Bear Creek early on um, at the Bear Creek School. And she's taught a variety of grades. She's taught second and fourth and sixth grade. And currently she is our language specialist for our lower school and early middle school. So she teaches uh, Spanish for first and second, and then um, third through six, she um, teaches them Latin. She is a truly gifted communicator. She loves Jesus. She does public speaking as well. So you guys are in for a real treat. And not only that, she's an amazing mom and wife. And so I'm so excited to have Denise come up here. So yay. So sweet. Yay. Thanks, Denise. Good I'm so excited. I think I'm on. Can you hear me OK? I have to tell you a little bit about myself before we get started. Um, you will figure out my personality very quickly. And I'm a little bit of a fire hose um, because I'm so excited about this topic. And I've seen so many families and marriages and uh, parenting uh, p p parents be able to be really get some tools that have been, opened their eyes to like, oh, now I understand why there's a little bit of conflict or, oh, I didn't understand before this. So I've seen so many changes. And so um, I first learned about personalities and, and there's personalities and all the ways we understand ourselves and analyzing is really a hot topic right now. Um, so there's Myers-Briggs and Enneagrams are a big deal. And so um, the thing I like at this is it's just four. And so it's a quick way to see and to analyze. Um, 25 years ago, I learned it, and it was such a huge gift to our, my husband and I in our marriage because I thought, what is going on? Um, the way we see life is totally different. It's not just our personalities. It's how we see everything. And um, it made a huge difference in us understanding each other, our communication, um, all aspects of our marriage. Um, I've been teaching for 26 years, and it has been so valuable for my students that I can analyze who they are and then know how to communicate, know how they click, know how I can feed them and fuel them and know not what to do or something that they don't appreciate. Um, and I uh, have been speaking for 17 years and my hottest topic is personalities. So I do Christian retreats for women and it's fun when we were in Leavenworth uh, for a retreat, the women went out and had a break and they said everybody that was at Starbucks was asking me which personality they were. And they were talking about, oh, you're mine, also am I. And they said, that's all we talked about was personalities um, because it's a great topic. So um, I wanna let you know that um, to, th I have some returning people that have done the talk before and that you, um, I change it up each time, so hopefully you'll get something new, and that you'll just get a little something, and then maybe other things might go to the side, and that's okay. Whatever you need to, to um, put together for your family. So um, I love word pictures, and I use it with my kids. I did this with my kids this week, and I was amazed how much they loved it, is that we're all individuals, and we're all different colors and different sizes, and we all, um, desire connection but we need to know how to connect and so this is your family all the colors and maybe you have different personalities or maybe you have a family members where two of them are the same personality you can take a look but it's how we fit together and so we fit together in different ways and sometimes there's a clash where we're not connecting and we don't fit um, and so what does your unique family need and what does your unique family, their personality? And today, each one of you is gonna go away with something totally different. And I love that. Every time I talk to people afterwards, they're like, oh, this is my takeaway. Oh, this is my takeaway. And so um, I'm looking forward to what you're gonna learn about your family. And you're gonna be learning about maybe that sister-in-law that you have a hard time with or your mother-in-law or your parents. Um, I want to let you know, too, that um, after this, there's a lot of self-reflection of your childhood. So you might have had a personality of a, of a parent, and I just encourage you to process through that. Why, why am I stuck on that, or why did I not um, feel valued, or whatever it is, don't, don't push it down, dig it up. I mean, the more that we dig it up, the more that we can be better parents. A lot of times when I'm doing parenting stuff, Almost every time I'm coaching someone with parenting, it goes back to their childhood. And they're like, my mother never, my father never. And then, unfortunately, I'm doing exactly what they did, and I don't want to be that person. 
So we've got some big stuff we're going to deal with today, um, and it's good to get it out. So I do a lot of like processing and life coaching with people about their parenting and how they want to change their parenting for their children. Um, so what I want to do first before we even begin is um, today we're going to be working on connecting. I think as having a child, I have an autistic child that's 13. Today is his birthday, which is exciting. And um, I have a 16-year-old um, daughter. And I have to tell you, some of the things that I've done through on the way are paying off with my teenager. We have a great relationship, and I want to share that I thought it was just preschool that we were doing these things, and now I know it's coming back, and I'm going to be sharing about that. I'm going to talk about, these are my two kids when we went to Mexico. Um, so one of the things about connecting is serving. And so we went to an impoverished area in Mexico and taught conversational English. So my daughter's in the middle and my son is on to the side. It's easy to tell because they don't have that gorgeous olive skin. <laughs> so, um, and so I'm going to be talking about different things. And I mean, I'm going to throw in some multiple intelligences and some love languages. Pick it up, don't pick it up, throw it away, whatever works, um, wherever you're at. Let's see if I can. Oh, there we go. Whoa. Whoa, sorry, I'm a fast clicker. Um, so we're gonna talk about the four personalities and um, it's on the Frasier sheet, so why don't we do that? Um, first of all, I wanna talk about, um, oh, here we are. The, I'm gonna go through this one. We're gonna be talking about the general personalities, the personality comparisons, applying personalities to parenting and being purposeful and connecting with your children. Um, and one of the ways that I'm purposeful in serving is for uh, like five years in a row, we'd get all of the girlfriends together of my daughter and we would ser have a day of service. It's because there's lots of different ways to connect and one important way is to serve together or to think outside of yourselves. It's very bonding when you go and feed the homeless or this is an organic um, garden that helps um, give gorgeous vegetables and fruit to food banks because I work at a food bank and sometimes the vegetables aren't so great. So making the best. Um, so the sheet on, the, on your front of your paper um, is gonna tell the four personalities. So let's do an overall view of the personalities and get an idea before we dive into the individual ones. So, so easy to do is that lions, they're the, the uh, animals personify the personality. So it's really great for kids because they can understand because of Aesop. If you're not reading Aesop's fables, you got to read Aesop's fables. It's the best way to teach moral character. Um, Aesop helps us to, to, to find personalities in, in animals. So this one right here is the otter. I have a picture of girls, but it's an otter. So the lion and the otter are the extroverts. So they're going to let you know. So if, um, if you don't know what they're thinking, you're not listening because they are always extroverting. Um, and then the beavers and the golden retrievers, they're more introverts. So the lions and the beavers are task focused. They love to do things. The otters and the golden retrievers are people focused. So on the same, the otters and the lions are a me. It's about me. I'm the main character in this play and you're supporting my role as the leader. These are, are we. They put others first. They don't want to be the center of attention. The beavers and the golden retrievers. That's a we. Um, they also have where um, the, this side of the spectrum are feelers. This side are thinkers. They'll go first to thinking about things. They'll analyze it. These guys will go first to feeling. How do I feel? We've got, of course, talkers and listeners. And um, these people live life in abundance. I have lots of energy, lots of time. These people live in scarcity. So I have to watch how much energy I put out. I don't have a lot of friends because I just have enough energy to pour into a couple of people. I have lots of friends and lots of energy, but then they burn out because they don't realize that everybody has scarcity in their time and in their energy. So these guys will overcommit, not show up. Sorry, I have to cancel. Um, these guys, if they commit to you, they're going to show up and they're going to be on time. And they're gonna, they already have estimated, do I have enough resources for this? Yes, I'll go to lunch with you. Um, so this is the abundance and scarcity. Are you starting to see your kids? 
Are you starting to see a little bit about where they come from and just in their extrovert or introvert? Um, an extrovert or introvert, the really important thing about that is where you get filled up. So everybody thinks I am the biggest extrovert, but I really, I love extroverting. I love going to big parties, I love having parties, but I truly feel by myself. So that's one of the things that I can say, if you can give a gift to any child and give a gift to yourself, and when I coach people, I ask, what fills you? And when they say, I don't know, they say, okay, let's start figuring that out. Because you're gonna burn out really fast if you do not know what fills you and what fills your child. And me, my best time is in the woods, in my spot, in beautiful nature, taking a walk. That just like, it's spending time with God, I'm filled. So if you get to know what fuels your child, and that will help them to know what also what's really draining. So sometimes when they're having a meltdown, it's because they're drained. They have nothing left to give. I didn't fill them up in the ways that they get filled up, and then you're gonna have a meltdown or then you're gonna have issues um, because they can't self-regulate if they're not getting filled up. Now the thing about this personality, oh thank you Peter, you're so great, is Everybody loves to go, this is my strength. Look at me. I can do this really well. And I want everybody to see this because this feels good to show you all my strengths. And everybody goes, yay you, yay you. Look at all of you. You're so great. But you know what we need to teach our kids is I got a shadow side. But it's actually just like the earth. You cannot have sun all day. You need to have some night. And so what you do is you find out what your weakness is, and you say, this is me, my full self. I know who I am. I know what I'm working on. I know some areas that are not in my tool bag, naturally, and I need to learn how to use them. There's no shame and guilt. Everybody's got a nighttime. So let's just be honest with ourselves what our nighttime is. And let's start to say, this is where I shine in the day, and this is where I'm working to be a full, whole person. And you know what? That's why we have families. Because I have never known any family that is exactly the same people. <laughs> right? Everybody needs a little bit of, of, of uh, we can say it's either going to be a clash or a compliment. If you look at a color wheel, the best colors are the opposites. So we need to go, hey, you are, we actually complement each other, not crash and clash. Um, so when we're going to be talking about this, a brief overview, the lions, their strength, is the golden retriever's weakness. The golden retriever's weakness is the lion's, uh, the golden retriever's strengths is the lion weakness. So when you're taking notes and you've got a lion, you wanna work on the golden retriever's strengths. And if you have an otter, then you wanna go to beaver of where their shadow side is. And beaver is the otter shadow side. And so we actually, God gives us this, and he is complete in all personalities, in my faith view. And I have to tell you, if you have a different faith view, awesome. I love that we are each individual person, and we respect each person where they are in their faith view. Today, I'm going to, if you give me permission, talk about, about my faith view, because it's a, a key to my life. And I, from my faith view, I see God is complete, and so he completes me in my side that I don't have. He shows me what that looks like. And I can see that I'm being transformed by that. And so um, everybody has a piece of the puzzle because he, I, I believe that God made it that we need each other. You're not the whole puzzle. <laughs> you might think, but I do know people that have learned and worked and they are well-rounded people. And that's because of their wisdom and time. So um, hopefully this helps you a little bit. Um, can I also, sometimes I integrate this into each personality, but this time you can tell me if it works to, to do it beforehand. So connecting with your children. The thing about it is, is that I have a close friend and she told my daughter, I will visit you in prison. There is nothing you can do that I will love you less. And I love that. And so whatever happens, especially with teenagers, there's a lot of broken relationships because it, we're, you, the focus is the bedroom's a mess instead of I'm connecting with you. And so connecting early is gonna pay off when you have a teenager. Um, so one, ways that, one of the ways that we connect is through words at our house because we love words. And my daughter actually made this our mailbox. 
and she decorated it. And so one of the ways that you connect with your child is words. And I'm going to be talking about the different ways to encourage them with words as we go along. I love what she wrote on the side. She said, friendships, fights, and other stuff, but no matter what, we're family, whether we like it or not. <laughs> I was like, OK, that's nice. So you might want to make a, create a little something like that. Um, if you're having tension with a strong personality and then a quiet personality, one of the things that we do in the summer, because we have that, is person of the day. We do it in the classroom all the time. And so we'll say, oh, he's person of the day. So he gets to be the one that gets to choose today. Because I know families, and I've counseled with parents, that they have one quiet one, and he never gets what he wants. Because he doesn't want to fight the people to say, no, it's my turn. And so person of the day gets to choose um, whatever it is. And at the beginning of the day in the summer, because summers are awesome and summers are terrible. Summers are hard. August, I'm like, hello, when does school start? So what we do is we write down on a day, we're going to be home for the day because we need some home days, is what are your things that you need to do and what are the things you want to do? Huge difference in families when people get to write, OK, then we're going to do this thing for this child, we're gonna do this activity for that child, we're gonna get our stuff done, this is what mom needs, and you talk about it before you start the day and make a plan, huge difference. We're celebrating you right now and we're doing art, or we're going on a walk, or we're picking rocks, or whatever we're doing, have those home days where each person gets to choose. And I, we do the same with um, game night, we have game night, and different people get to choose which game they get to play. So it's, oh, it's David's game night, we're going to play something intellectual. And my daughter's going to be like, oh, I hate that game. It's like, fine, then we'll play the fun, interactive game when it's your night. You might be already doing this, but if you're not, it really helps to complement the different um, personalities and that one person doesn't get to take everything over. Um, so the, the thing about it, I was going to tell you about the leads, is the lions and the otters are the leads in the play. The golden retrievers want to be in the audience. They don't want any attention. And the beavers want to be backstage and working with the technical stuff. So what we're going to try to do is say, OK, how can you get your kids in different situations where they're not always having the same part? They need to have a different part in order to understand other people. So be thinking about that. Um, the other thing is that in our packet is a character quality. Everything um, grow and it's paid off oh, it's paid off, I've, is about character. It's not about the action, it's not about the behavior, it's about the character. So we work on a different character quality. Um, it used, sometimes it needs two months, sometimes it's a month, and we go specifically of um, what does that character quality look like? How is it expressed? Who do we know that has that quality? And how can we grow in baby steps to grow in that quality? So I, I always had some kind of incentive, whether it was putting something in a jar or stickers or something when we worked on good character. We'd say, wow, you took initiative. And I have to tell you, when people come over, they're like, oh my gosh, or if my daughter goes to their house or son, she just picked up the dishes and put them away and started cleaning up. And I said, that's because I say, instead of go do the dishes, take initiative. What needs to be done? Whoa, you took initiative and took in the garbage can. Whoa, you just cleaned the bathroom and took initiative. I am not going to follow you around and tell you what to do, and I'm not going to nag you about it. So there's lots of stuff that needs to be done, and it's taking initiative. But now I see that she'll get up, she'll take the dishes, because that's what she likes to do. If i got to do something, I'm going to do something I like. And, or she'll clean the bathroom. I better, I better don't like vacuuming, so I'll clean the bathroom. Sweet. Then she's taking initiative. So think about that as we're going through. Is We're going to be talking about... Um, uh, character qualities, um, because I think that's the core. And now, um, Aesop's Fables, talk about character qualities. When you read a book, what character quality? Oh, they made a mistake. What character quality are they lacking? What strategies they need to learn that character quality? Because we're whole when we have good character. So the first one is the lion. And um, if you are feeling overwhelmed, you're here because you may have a lion in your house. Um, they're a leader, problem solver, courageous, um, pa they're passionate, they persevere, and they're motivated by vision. They're way out there. If they're the first one to go to the top of the gym, um, the gymnasium, or whatever you're climbing, if they're the ones that say, follow me, they walk in and they're like, oh, wait, who's in charge? I know what I need to do. Um, they're a really strong personality. How many of you think you may have a lion in your home? Okay, 
So you're lucky because they're going to be the CEO, the President of the United States. Um, they're going to be uh, running the world. So um, be happy that you have your lion because that's good stuff. But if your lion doesn't know how to serve, they're never going to have anyone follow. And it's really frustrating when you have people that they walk on people. I've got some lion in me, and I know it. And so they have a, they have a way of they see the vision and then they mull people over to get there, never at the cost of other people. So we need to bring in, and we'll get to the golden retriever of how to do that. So for lions, um, they are energized by achievement. Lions love making goals. So they love choosing a character quality and then how are they going to reach it and how they're going to get stickers and all the things. It's your goal. It's not my goal. It's your goal because lions love to achieve things. So the beginning of the day go, hey, what do we need to do? What are our goals? And let them own it. Um, lions do a great job with, um, with having tasks that they get to uh, uh, complete. And lions can... Um, overwhelm people. So if you had a lion as a father um, or a mother and you're a golden retriever, you got a little squished and maybe you didn't have a voice. And so that's something that, that you need to um, process through. If, how many of you are parent lions? Okay. So I th think that's part of the thing is that um, lions tend to be very controlling because they know how they want it. And um, their way is my way. So if you had the ready, set, uh, ready, aim, fire analogies, there are fire, fire, fire. That's what they're going to do. If they had a car, it's going to be Porsche because they need to get the fastest way there. Their question that they ask is what? What do I need to overcome? What do I need to do? Um, their cartoon character would be but Roadrunner, Lucy's always bossing everybody around, and Rabbit. They're the ones that know what needs to happen, and they're kind of leading forward. And we need leaders. 10% of the population are lions. Thank the Lord it's 10%, right? <laughs> we only need 10%. So we want to make sure um, that the love and logic was built for lions. It's their thing, you're not gonna wrestle with them, and that they choose their consequences, which is great. Um, for lions, they have, um, tell me a country that's a lion country. United States. United States, you knew it, exactly. Where is my ice? I'm in Italy, that's the way I roll, and I want the rest of those, but so many pit countries are like, oh, you're from the US, you're so demanding. When you travel, I almost want to be, where are you from? United States. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. We're so rude to everybody. Um, so Germany is a strong country, two world wars. And um, there, you can see even in Asia, I lived in Japan, there's different personalities or stronger personalities um, within even the Asian realm. And they can say to the personalities. So lions are the United States. And we do protect the world, but we do boss a lot of people around in, this, in the way that we do it. So if you've got a lion, give them choices. And the thing that's great is they need to learn to be good decision makers. All, all kids need good choices because then they know, they um, prepares them for being adults. So not just red or blue, but which choice do you want to make? And then what do you think the consequence of that choice? Um, one of the things that, that really helped me with my autistic son is that he would make a choice and then we do like those, um, th they used to, we used to have them probably preschool here where you take red and green and you put them together in a chain and put them on the trees. We would make that and we would say, this choice led to this and then this led to this and then this led to this. And, so, and we do it in a positive and a negative way. So just like chess, think two steps ahead. You need to go two steps ahead of whatever you need. So when we think of lions, they are impulsive. And they do it right away without thinking. So maybe you want to do that, Shane. OK, you, you hit your brother. OK, then what was the consequence? And then how did he feel? How did mom feel? Whoa, there's a lot of chain reactions going on here. And so then you can just say, stop. Fill out the chain if you go forward with this choice. What's going to be down the road for the people around you? 
start thinking about people, because they're tasked, right? They don't have a focus on people. And so that's really good for lions. Um, make goals with them. Give them the big picture view. They have to know why they're doing what they're doing. Um, give them leadership jobs. And, um, and they also want to be physical. So you want to get them and run. They have a lot of energy. And so buy a trampoline or buy something where they can move their bodies um, because they need to move. Um, if you're going to do a lion, the quote I love is by Emerson. Do not go where the trail may lead, but go where there is no trail is no path and leave a tr and leave a trail. So do not go where the path may lead, but go where there is no path and leave a trail. So they're the ones that are the ones that are Edison's that are in science or the people like Harriet Tubman that go back to the south because they have the courage to say I'm free, but I'm not going to be free on my own until everybody's free. So they have awesome vision. The woman who started this school, who is near and dear to me, was huge lion. And she used to come in my room that was about the size when the school started, um, was like this big at 11 students. And she'd go, no, 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 no. You're doing it all wrong. You're supposed to be doing it this way. And I cried almost every day when I left. And I was like, I am not going to make it. And she told me on our first, the first retreat that we went on, the whole staff of Bear Creek was in a van. That's when I started. And she said, if you make a mistake, I'll fire you right now. I'm not going to hold on to you if you do stuff that you're not supposed to be doing. I was like, ah. Lions love to use fear to control people. My dad used fear. And finally, I figured, I'm not scared of you. And that's when our relationship really took over. He's like, OK, now I respect you, and now I'm not going to have to use fear. And so I was the one. My poor brothers didn't, my older brothers. And I finally, like, nothing you can say. You have no power over me. You, I'm not going to play your game. And he's like, oh, that's frustrating. Um, so that she was a lion, but this school was started in her daughter's bedroom. That's what lions do. They say, we need a highly academic school because her child was not being taught. Christian schools weren't giving her child what she wanted. And she said, I'm going to go back to my master's. And all the stuff that research says is good schools, we're going to do it all. Uniforms, good schools. Field trips, good schools. Parent involvement, good schools. And we talked about what are the things that make a good school, and then we started out. And I got to start out, and I got to have a lot of input into what we're doing today. And it's really exciting. But it's because of Nancy Price. I still write her, and every year I send her cards from kids, because we have not forgotten. And I had sent her a video at the beginning of the upper school. They sang, be thou my vision. And I ta taped her, and I said, look at your vision. Look at this theater. Look at this school, three schools. It was because she had a dream, and she followed it. So lions know that there's, give them a vision, and show them how to do it well. The next one, minimize talking and follow through with action. Be clear in your expectations beforehand. The biggest thing that I can say is never teach intention. So when are you setting aside time to teach? You teach, and you use word, I use word pictures. And so I'll use the connection one, or I'll use um, different other things where I will teach something specifically. We'll have expectations. It'll be really clear. And then we'll go forward. And then I have no verbal. It's all nonverbal when the situation's this way, if anything goes up. So I have an uh, autistic, OK? So I deal with the big stuff. When he starts to dysregulate, I just go like this. I love you too much to interact with you right now. You may not verbally vomit on me. You have five seconds to either go outside or go to the laundry room. And if you don't, it's gonna, the stakes are going to get higher. And so I just go like this. And then he knows I'm going to leave the room or because our home will be a home of peace. Our home will be a refuge. You have no right to steal the joy of the people around you. If you're not going to self-regulate, then we're going to make sure that you get out of the room and you can be alone, that you may not um, take that and steal that from others. And so um, there has to be, but I teach not intention. And one of the things I teach, and I have it right here, is um, I think I, is I made up cards of 100, 100 different questions. And we do it at the dinner table or when we're going out to dinner and we're waiting and we'll ask the questions like, who do you know that's wise? Um, if you could fill a swimming pool with anything, what would it be? Um, what do you like best about trees? Um, it's just all these different questions, a lot about character. So why do you see grandpa as wise? Why do you appreciate that character quality? And what does he do? How does it look? 
And we talk about it in different times. And so then when it's wisdom time, they have a model of someone who has that. And that's what I'm reaching to because I know that it is good. So are you setting aside times each week or each month to be really specific on building character? Are you giving them incentives to say, we're going to go get some ice cream because we've got integrity in our house. That's something to celebrate. Wow, I'm seeing integrity. I'm seeing responsibility. I'm seeing humility. Wow, we're going to celebrate that and we're going to make that our goal. And so do, do your kids know what those character qualities look like? So we did, I did, that's where it started in the classroom with my vision, is a lot of times we say the names humility or whatever, and research shows that kids do not actually attain it and, and be able to see what it looks like. So we did a character quality, and now they have every grade has a character quality for every month. And the character qualities before, we'd give them out, and I would find them on the ground. Nobody really cared. But once we really started talking about what wisdom, what kindness, what integrity looks like, I never found one character quality on the ground because it was on the fridge. I know what this character quality of steadfast means. I am faithful. People can trust me. And they, I never found one. But before, they'd throw them and I'd go, wow, what am I doing? This is a good quality. And then it's like, stop. And then once we, we worked on it, kindness coupons. Wow, that's a kindness coupon. That's a kindness coupon. That's a kindness coupon. Well, let's celebrate at the end and pull one out. Um, then the kids get excited about it. So you can do that at home. Okay, lions. Now we're going to go on to, oh, take a hike or bike ride. We're going to go on to the otters. So you, as you know, that's my personality. The lions are the eight Enneagram. And here's the road back to you, which is the Enneagram book. Uh -huh, I love the book. Look, I go crazy for this book. Lions, what it tells, it tells you their strengths and weaknesses. It tells you who they conflict with and who, how you can help them grow. It's um, the road back to you. It's, to me, it's a must read. And they're eights, if you're wondering. Here's the otters, and they're the threes and the sevens. They're the salesmen's like, hey, I can sell you anything. And they're the free, adventurous, I'll do anything. So um, for them, if it's ready, aim, it would be ready. Who wants to aim and fire? Let's just go out and have lunch. There's always a party for them. They're joyful, creative. They have great ideas. They love adventure and surprises. Um, if they ask a question, they go, who? Who's going to be there? Who's going to be the one? Who's going to go at the party? They love answering the question, who? Um, if they were a car, it would be a convertible so they could wave at all their friends when they go downtown. Um, they asked um, countries. Which countries would you say are otter countries? What? Italy. What are you talking about? This is very much. We paint, we do art, we do musicals. I was like, I'm with my people. I have a whole country of people that are just like me. They use their hands, they talk loud. Um, they're beauty. They love beauty. They crave beauty. I love Italy. Ha, ah, that's one of my favorites. Um, any other countries? So I talked, to, I heard from this one, um, uh, I'll think of his name. He's a, a singer. And he said, it's so funny when I sing in different countries. Because he sang in Russia, and they were all. <laughs> and then he sang in Brazil. And everybody in the stadium followed him out. And were like, woo! Woo! And then he sang in other countries. And they're just either stoic, or they look. And he's got to know, OK, this is a country personality thing. Um, but these guys, the Re Brazil, they were singing. and have. I just met someone this weekend from Colombia, and she said, no, she was from Brazil. And, she, and if you have otter, you have to touch. They're just like otters. I can tell they're otters because they're just like, mm -hmm. <laughs> hi, hi. And I can tell they're beavers because I put my arm on them and they go, <laughs> OK, I will not be touching you. I can tell you right now. So they kiss three times. And she said, and she was kissing, she sang, my mom had a party and she was the one that was singing um, a song, You've Got a Friend is what she sang. And um, she said, and then I came to the United States and they're like, hi. And she's like, come on, we got a little closer. When I lived in Japan, it was like we bow and we need five feet between us so we don't hit heads. So the, the physical part when I lived in Japan was like, whoop, sorry, okay, sorry. I just want to touch you, but I can't. And so it's different personalities. 
Um, they crave spontaneity and they interrupt, they can be moody because they have highs and then they have lows. So they're moody, they're disorganized. So if you say clean your room, you should just say because they're like, what are you talking about? Shove it under the bed and it looks better? Yeah, great. So with our fourth graders and with my kids, everybody had their binder exactly the same. And so our beavers were like, I've got it all organized. And the otters were like, oh, so binder checks and, and checks on their desks randomly, like, bummer, no recess. And that's like, oh, recess. Beavers are like, oh, recess, that's okay. I can stay in because it's really not that big a deal for me. Um, and so you would check the binder and the binder had to look and put that in your binder. Teach them what it looks like to be organized. Teach them to put their clothes out the night before, to make their lunch before they do, to show them by bins. This is the bin for this. And you'll have to teach them to be organized. So I have, I am Otter, and I have an, a daughter that, well, both my kids, oh, they're energized by experiences. Here we are at a thrift store, and there's my daughter when, she was, when we were doing a service day, and the money goes to Peru, where I went on a mission trip to an impoverished village. So I love this place, it's in Bothell, but it's all about the experience. If I'm on a hike and there's a river, I'm taking off my shoes and socks and I'm walking in it, baby. How can you not take off your socks? I say to my husband, how can you stand on the side of the river when it's a beautiful day? You've got to get in, you've got to experience it. Even if the water's freezing cold, it doesn't matter, jump in. And he always tells me, but you need to like measure the water before you jump. It's a good idea. Um, so I'm all about experiences. So we had awesome experiences in growing up, but I'm just going to show you a couple of them. How many of you think that you have, oh, First of all, I forgot to share, with the lions, they have a song, everybody has a song, and it's, I did it my way, because my way is the right and everybody else doesn't know what they're doing, so you should have followed me, because it's my way. Um, these guys' song, as you might realize, is, celebrate good times, come on, let's celebrate right now, it doesn't matter, always celebrate, we can always celebrate. And so every day is a party when you have an otter, they want to make it. So here is when we went to the village and we used balloons to teach English words of colors. Um, everything needs to be fun. And so when I was growing up, when my daughter was growing up, we had a lot of fun. And this is the, who has an otter here in your house? Awesome. So you have some otters. Um, and who is an otter? Oh my gosh, there's just not enough of us here. 30%. Okay, so this is the thing that I have to, I didn't bring my hat, but otter moms need to worry if you have a beaver child. Okay, so if you have a beaver hat, I have this hat that's a big crab, and the worst thing that an otter mom can do is go, Hi, honey! Hi, honey, I'm right here! And it sounds like, that's not my mom! That's not my mom! I promise you! I think you think he's with... So we are overwhelming to our children. So my daughter goes more golden retriever, and I have to take it down a notch, especially now that she's in high school, <laughs> I can get in big trouble. I have to just like take it down a notch because our energy, um, it monopolizes and takes over other people's personalities. So sometimes I gotta go, it's not about me, it's not about me right now, I've gotta take back because I can overwhelm. So this is, otters also never feel like they go in the box and they always feel like they're odd. So if you're truly an otter, you feel odd. So this is a song, the, I love this book, I like myself, I'm glad I'm me, there's no one else I'd rather be. I may be called a silly nut, a crazy cuckoo bird, so what? I'm having too much fun, you see, for anything to bother me. Even when I look a mess, I still don't like me any less, because nothing in this world you know can change what's deep inside. And so, so she is, these are the comedians, these are the inventors, these are the artists that if you have an otter, they're not going to fit in. And at Bear Creek, I fight for otters because they have a lot of energy and they don't like tasks. They're people focused and be, Bear Creek can be tasked if the teacher wants to get the stuff done and stop and then say, no, I've got some kids, I need to play some games. And they love Latin and Spanish because I play games every class. 
because I'm an otter and I need games. So no matter if they stop and stare at a person um, ever anywhere, can make me feel that what they see is really all there is to me. And, and it has this picture of someone um, that is, they're going to get judgment. This person. You're not like everybody else. And this week what I did is I said, hey, you guys, tell me about if I was from a different country, what would carrots look like? And they said they'd be orange and they'd be this and they'd be that. And I pulled out some carrots and I said, purple. OK. So fourth graders, you just read about Hannah Tupper, who was not part of the, um, of the pilgrims. Uh, what are they? they were, she was a different sect, and she had to live outside of the village. She was purple because they said, we only have orange carrots. That's the way we're supposed to be. We're supposed to sit up straight and have neat handwriting. And we're supposed to do things on time. That's what orange carrots look like. But what happens if you're a purple carrot? People are going to tease you or people are going to say, you're not right. I don't like you that you color outside the lines. I don't like that you don't fit in my box. Because I love you beavers, but beavers like a box. And so we, we can have some people that say, no, that's not right. Um, and black and whites don't click with people who color in all colors. So how do we fit in? OK, so what do otters need to do? Otters need to say, there are rules. I don't get to bend the lines. And I need to respect these rules because I see them as gray. But I need to, but then I also say, who am I? And I'm going to step across the line and do something different. And really, everybody loves it. Wow, that's, I've never seen that before, a purple carrot. I've never seen. And look at God. He made giraffes and octopuses. He says, oh, I'm going to do things crazy. Platypus, what is it? I don't even know. Looks like a duck, but I think it's a, a, a mammal. Like, let's just, like, I'm going to make whales breathe with air just because I think it's fun, right? So you yourself might feel uncomfortable with otters. And so otters need to know that that's OK. I know I'm a little out of the box, and that's OK. Um, I might make you feel uncomfortable. And, um, and what do we do about that? So the other thing that I was going to say about my daughter is almost <laughs> like once a week, we would do a scavenger hunt. And I'd like get string, and I'd put it through the house, and then I would have something at the end. Or we would do a scavenger hunt, and my daughter would be like, "Dad," would, her dad would come home, and she goes, "It's a scavenger hunt, Dad. You'll never know where it's at." He'd be like, "Thanks, honey." And we'd always have games. Um, we also made stories and did lots of art. So here's the art. We'd have the book, and it's this book, The Napping House. And as the book goes on, it grows. So we did it with leaves. And each person got to draw their picture of our cat goes on the top, and everybody's in the pictures, and um, in the story of how leaves are combining. And then we took pictures in leaves. And then we gave it as a Christmas gift to grandparents and to our cousins. So there's our cat. And so this is making experiences. So we capture the experiences with a favorite book. Um, and this one is, this is how we go to ballet, go to ballet, go to ballet. This is how we go to ballet. Hooray, hooray, hooray. This is what we say to ballet, say to ballet. And she drew the pictures. And we, she read it over and over again because she knew the song before she could read. And it was an experience for us to go to ballet. And then the pictures that go with it. Um, ain't going to paint no more, no more. Ain't going to paint no more. Oh, what the heck? I'm going to paint my neck. I ain't going to paint no more. We did this, and we painted different parts of our body. And then they had to guess what part it was. Um, and so we had fun. And then she would take it everywhere. And they'd have to guess, like, where did that come from? And where did this come from? And then we'd take pictures. And then the pictures would be in the front. Um, so they were her stories, which I know with uh, Mrs. Ramston and Mrs. Anderson, that uh, they do these all the time. Your kids are creating, and your kids are writing. And in our elementary, they're writing. Yeah. Um, staples, put it together for me. Um, then my beaver son, it's not a circle, it's a, and we'd go walking, and then he'd go, oh, that looks like a, a, there's a circle there, or it's a pumpkin, or it's not a circle, it's a book. 
there's a book. It's not a circle and it's not a stick. And then they make it into something, which is great. And then, oh, it's a balloon. Or it's my family. And so this is his book. But the thing about it that I never realized is how crazy they go for the book. It's their book and then they take it. And we, of course, have to tell about the author. If your children are reading the, um, the series where they have a map, A to Z Mysteries. So we made a map and then we would tell stories every night about the map and we put it on the bed and who from the neighborhood got into trouble and which animals went and did which things and we created a map because we were reading AZ Mysteries and we always would go back to the map. What street are they on when that happened? And oh, let's look at the map. So we were really into the map. And then this is just the ABCs. Everybody makes these, but I just think it's fun that we just did art for each one. And then I just kept the art and the colors. And then I love kid art, so now we still look at it. It's so fun. Um, the other thing that we, that the exuberance of an otter is a thankful family journal. And I have to tell you that the kids love it because they, the handwriting changed. And so we look through it. I had one in here that, um, Oh, here. For calls play, thank you, no, that the Seahawks will win this month. <laughs> so this is my 16-year-old that wrote this. We love it. Like, it's so fun to just talk about. And now she writes when we went to, like, after a trip, um, she talked about, thank you for my friends and my girlfriends. Thank you for... Um, my aunt and uncle see their handwriting's changed and then it goes up. So that's another thing that you can do. Teach the co character quality of thankfulness. If you go on a trip or you have a special experience, why don't you guys write down some things you're thankful for and at the dinner table we can share those. So um, tell me some things that with cooking, art, we dance. We, our family dances like as often as we can, we turn on the music and we just dance together. It's just so freeing. And we just had a 50, my, my husband and I turned 50, my daughter turned 16, and my son, we're celebrating his 13th early. And we just danced. We just had a big dance in our driveway because we love to dance. So you think, oh, I dance with a preschooler. No, you keep dancing. And my daughter and I is still dancing. So like, we'll just start dancing. It was funny. We have the, dot cam the camera in on our um, garage. And we, my husband's always like playing it back for us when we do silly things. But my daughter came out, and she just went. And she was like, I, and we were just like, you're dancing, baby. You're a peeler. It's awesome. Like, nobody's looking. And, um, and this, this morning, we got the song, I hope you dance. And whatever life throws at you, I hope you dance. Don't sit down and dance. I go, honey, this is our song. Like, it, it represents, like, get out there. Be yourself. Dance how you want to. Don't let anybody hold you back. Um, that's what they need to hear. I have to tell you that I taught two weeks at a church in downtown um, in Seattle. And um, the, there was a mom that was there, and she came to me, and there was, the group was so big where they put it into two groups. And she said, I'm so overwhelmed with my child. I'm going to take him to the psychologist. Something is wrong with him. He doesn't do his homework, and he's just not doing things. And it, I'm just really concerned. I go, OK, why don't you try these things this week? Let, when he does his homework, let him do a trampoline. Let him have breaks very often. Make sure he gets out and moves. And I had all these ideas of what they could do during the week. So the next week she came back and just engulfed me and hugged me and said it was the best week. We had the most fun because she was a beaver mom and she had all the tasks and she was draining her son. And so we need to have a little fun. I said, Re do fun things, what he wants to do. Give him choice. And she said it was the best week. And I said, you know what? The, it, it, he doesn't have any problem. He's an otter. You have all these individual sports you're doing with him, get him into group sports, have the neighbors over, have a play date, fill his soul. And she said he was awesome. He got it done when he got to take just five more minutes, then you get to take a break and we'll do something fun. Then five more minutes and say your words like this or use hand motions with the, like whatever words you're doing, just use motions, yeah. Oh, totally. Oh yeah, totally. 
you need the nap more than they do, probably. So I always said, it's nap time, you do whatever you want, but I have, it's my free time, I have to get, uh, be alone. So even way up, even now, we take breaks, like in the summer. Everybody goes somewhere for an hour and a half, and then we'll come back together. Yeah, definitely, tons of energy. Um, so um, organizational strategies is what you need to teach them and plan for fun things. So you're gonna see in the beaver where you can work on um, things that he, they can work on. Play games as a family. Sing and dance together and encourage them to move. Their bodies need to move. Next we're gonna go on to the golden retriever. And the golden retriever, um, they say, ready? Ready, is everybody ready? Are, are you ready? Because you know what? My car's a van. I have plenty of space. The buckles work. You, are you ready? And you know, your song is, um, lean on me when you're not strong. I'll be a friend. I'll help you carry on. That's what our, we love, 35%. Thank you, Lord. There's 35% that are the faithful golden retrievers that serve. And their question is that they have to say, how? How, how am I supposed to do it? How? How? They want to know every detail before they get into the water. And so there are peacemakers. They're the personality two. So there's our two. Karen's a two. And she is a helper. Um, and a four, sometimes they're a little eccentric because they want to show themselves, but they don't want to do it through verbally, so they'll do it through tattoos or piercings because they want to express themselves, but they, they don't have maybe the expression in a way that an otter would. So you might see some really, really deep thinkers. So whenever I see somebody with a tattoo, I'll say, tell me about this tattoo because they have deep thoughts. They think deeply about life but they're not gonna express it in a different way. Or why do you choose purple hair? Tell me about that. And it's really fascinating how deep it is of the stuff that they have um, come up with. They're servants, they crave consistency, and um, their, their problem is, is they don't have, take a lot of initiative. They're just fine not doing a lot. So nines um, in the Enneagrams are called the sloth because they're fine, and I have, a, I have that personality. I would like to call them a cat, because nobody judges a cat for sleeping all day, um, but they're that personality. So here's my otter. She's adopted, and she, we went and um, served for a week at the Young Lives Teen Moms, and she loved being with kids because her par birth parents were teens, and sh that's her way to heal of being a teen mom and to love on these teen moms. And then here she is, the thing I never even realized when we made a fireplace area, that it was gonna be our meeting place. And it is incredible that how often I'll say, I'm going out to a fire, you wanna go? And there's something about sitting around the fire that she just opens up. It is amazing. And our family just like, oh, you're there? I'm gonna come around. So this is a picture of her, and I think it's a really great self-reflective. And Karen's a second mom to her, Mrs. Ferminger, and um, she really opens up when she's in safe places. Um, so just think about your, if you've got that quiet personality, we talked about several of you that have that, of how are you giving them voice? How do they get to share that deepness? Please have them start journaling, even if they can't write. Draw a picture about how you feel. Tell how you feel. They have big feelings, but they need to have people that will share it. Almost every golden retriever I know feels invisible. So if you don't know what a golden retriever is thinking, it's because you haven't asked. And you need to know how to ask. So um, I drive home with my daughter every day, and in that car when we're moving, she shares because it's not eye to eye. So whenever the look at me that we had, maybe your parents gave to you, look at me when I'm talking to you. No, don't make your kids look at you. Because it's an alpha saying, look at me. You are giving, you are controlling them. You say, hey, I'm available. And it's, I'm just like, my schedule changes when I'm at home with my daughter because it's just like, I'm doing something, she needs to talk. Okay, we're gonna sit right here and you're gonna spill it. Okay, good. Okay, now you're done with me, so now I'm gonna go up and do whatever the other thing is. So find those places. Where are those places where you gather? Is it the kitchen table? 
dinner is a must. We have dinner together every night because that's when we ask questions. That's when we do your highs and lows of your day. That's where we share. That's where we build foundation for life in community and connection. Um, so where's your place? And do you set it aside or is it organic? Or how do you take space from each other and how do you take time to connect? And do you have routines for that? Like we connect right before we go to bed and we do this routine of sharing stories or highs or lows or um, feelings. So this is the thing that I love is I love word pictures. So we talk about a rose. A rose has a bloom. What was your bloom today? What just, just bloomed? And every situation also has a bud. What's budding right now that you're excited about that's just around the corner? And then what was a thorn? That's life. Life is full of thorns. And the thorns make us stronger. And the thorns are a way of sharpening us. So it's a great way to talk about whatever it is. Because you could go, oh, the party was great, but no, the party was great. It was a rose. There are some thorns. That's life. And so it's a great way. And I, my kids go, oh, that's a thorn. But it, you know what? Let me tell you about some blooms. Yep, I like those blooms too. Um, so those are, the, they're huge processors. She thinks so deeply. One-on-one. -on -one. She doesn't want a big group. They don't want a big group. They like safe, nurturing environment. If you raise your voice, they will not hear you. They will not be able to hear you if you raise your voice. They are so dysregulated by just the sound of your voice, it's not going to work. So what we do at our house, which is, I have to tell you, it's golden is that we just started where we said something happened to either one of our kids. Draw it, write it down, process through it. Then we sit down, and they're in the driver's seat. So we're, we just don't talk, my husband and I. And they say, this is what I did. This is why it wasn't a good choice. These are the people I affected. This is how I'm going to make it right. And we always do a job, because I just say, hey, why don't you get back to the family? Mop the floor. My kid can, kids can do any jobs. I mean, mop, sweep, everything. They know how. Clean the car. And they'll say, OK, I'm going to do the dishes for a week. And we'll go, great. That's it. Because we're not going to do the work for them. They're smart. They know what they're doing. So most time in the classroom, when I go out and talk to a child, hey, what's going on? Why'd you do it? I was being impulsive. OK, well, what strategy are you going to use next time? Do you, are you, do you have put on your filter? Put on your filter. Woo, this thought could have some negative. So I'm, not even, I'm going to throw that thought away. Because that thought's not helping me. We can throw our thoughts away. Our thoughts don't define us. Everybody has thoughts that go in that aren't great. And what we do is we just take our filter and throw those away. And then we say, oh, this is a good thought. OK, are you ready to throw those things away? Let's go back. And they own it. And now at 16, when she does it, she's like, we doesn't need the paper. She's like, this is what I did, whatever. Would you give me forgiveness? This is what I'm going to do for And she does it all. And we're like, we're really proud of you. Great job. Everybody makes mistakes. Good job. Everybody falls. You're getting up. Your value doesn't depend on if you make mistakes. So that's golden. We did it when she was younger, and I thought, this is sweet. And now it is, it's, whenever she does something, I just keep my mouth shut, let her process. And when she's ready, she always comes, and, and so does my son. He's the quickest to ask for forgiveness. Um, card writing, my daughter still makes homemade cards. And we give cards. Every day, give something away. So uh, we give a lot of cards and flowers, because we have a huge yard, and vegetables and fruit and candy. And um, she's a very generous, I have, I'm passionate about generosity. If you want to have where a child is able to engage, teach them generosity. It's one of the most beautiful character qualities is I don't need it. I can give it. I can share it. It was given to me to share. And so, um, and, it, and it blesses people. And then you say, wow, this feels good. Um, do, how many golden retrievers do we have? OK. And do you guys have some of the stronger personalities with your golden retrievers? OK. So you just see that they're a complement. So how are you going to give them a voice? How are you going to say, my mom's a golden retriever married to a lion father. And she didn't find her voice until 40 when she said, no, I have a voice. I have the right to have an opinion. And we're not always going to go to your restaurant or we're not going to do it on your vacation. Um, and so I have a strong personality. So last year I said, honey, we'll go anywhere you want to go. Because he never complains. He always does with the rest of the group. And I said, well, do, I'll do anything. It's your trip. And I've done my bucket list stuff. You do yours. And we went to Montana. And it was in Idaho, which to me was not where I would choose. But we had a great trip. 
because we want to value each person in our family. Um, they want to take the easy way. The country, oh my gosh, can you please tell me a country? Mexico, what? Canada. Canada. Mexico, they're, okay, they, nothing is on time because they, well, the, the driver ran into his second cousin's mother. Hi, how are you? How's your family? How are your parents? How's your dog doing? I lived in Mexico and I was an exchange student in Mexico and I crave the Mexican people. And when I went there with my kids, my Mexican sister, Irma, has a downstairs with a table that seats 25. And she, and she has a maid that helps her cook all the cooking. Every Sunday, everybody's there. And when we were around that table, I said, kids, this is why we're here. This is Mexico. It is about family and it's about people first. And yeah, they might not be producing big stuff, but they know the importance. So my Mexican sister, her in-laws bought a ranch just for Sundays because they have 100 people in their family with great-great-grandchildren and they wanted to get together. Another one of mine bought another swimming pool, a house, they're wealthy, they bought a house with a swimming pool just for Sundays and birthday parties because they want to be together. So their families are huge and they value people. I love that. And they're slower paced, which I love. Um, but they're, timely is not the part. They love to serve, and here's Joy with our sweet friend, Maria, who is Down syndrome. She has served since fourth grade twice a month. So it's been, and so she's in 11th grade right now, and since fourth grade, she has faithfully served, and she loves her babies. And here she is um, painting the nails in an elderly home. And so she's able to get filled up because the women's hands shake, and so we took a group of girls to paint their nails. All right, beavers have been waiting very patiently. Now, I'm going to see who's a beaver by rolling roll call, because some people may not have registered, and we need to know who they are. So <laughs> we want to make sure that there is plenty of, a, of information and facts about who is here and what the purpose of this is. So if any of you do not have a spreadsheet, then you are not a beaver. Beavers, do you love spreadsheets? Just say, you love the spreadsheets. So if you're going to have a car, it's going to be on the spreadsheet, the most economical, the most cost effective. It's going to take you a year, but when you choose it, it's going to be the best car. I'm married to a beaver, and I have, like, beaverdom is his whole family history. He's beaver. Beavers ask why. Tell me why I need to know the details. Tell me why I need to know the hardcore facts. Tell me why I am not going anywhere until I go the right way. So this is the right way. And this book is so fabulous of the four personalities. It's a must read. It's the four personalities and they go on a trip together. And they each have a key and they each have beauty. You have to read this and so here, the otter needs to find out which bunny is pointing the right way because he look, likes to look for details. So this is the otter. The otter says, ready, aim, aim, recalculate, aim again, recalculate, aim again, again, recalculate, fire, bullseye, really, because they have so much. So they. Um, they have the de they are into the details. They're not creating things, they're recreating, like Bill Gates. He knew those things, but he recreated. They're recreating the cars. So in the 70s, when Japan said, we're gonna be leading the car industry, the America goes, ha ha ha, look at our big fancy cars, how can you beat it? Well, we can make them smaller, we can make them more cost effective, and we can make them more reliable. Boom, they went to the top of the line. So Japan, I felt like I'm living in beaverdom. And they were, I loved living in a country of just the details of the beauty of creating flowers and the beauty of their language. Language, I love Japan. They're obedient, they're black and white, they're analytical, and their whole, whole thing is otters, I mean, uh, the golden retrievers are emotional, beaver, uh, uh, lions are physical, Otters are social, and these are the intellectual. 
So they love science and math. Generally, that's kind of where they go is the science. They're discerning and responsible. So cre creating and um, being specific about creating experiences. This is when we go on hiking. I think hiking is a really great way to get out. So just put it on your calendar first. Don't let all the other stuff get in there. Make sure you're having those experiences. And that's what my husband loves is he loves hiking. And so we have, um, that we had the car, and the question is why. They always ask why. They're not going to do anything if they don't know it's the right way. Um, we did do a country, Japan. Um, I have to say God gave the Swiss the Alps because they keep them clean. So they're a very, very, I mean, if you are 10 seconds late, you miss the train when you're in Switzerland. <laughs> so I think there's a lot of Hispanic people who missed a lot of trains when visiting, like, ah, oh, so close. If, if, a, if a beaver sees their second cousin's aunt's mother, they'll say, I'm, on, I'm going to the train, sorry. I don't have time because I'm gonna be, and they always show up like 10 minutes early to wherever they go and they have all, if they're going backpacking, they have the whistle. They have the flashlight. They have the emergency kit. They are always prepared. So this is the thing with my husband. I'm idea person. Blah, blah, blah. I have this idea. He has to go through all the ways it's not going to work before he can say yes. <laughs> well, it could, this could happen, and we could get a flat tire, and da, da 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 And I just let him process for a week of all the reasons why it doesn't work and what we need to make sure of if we're going to go ahead with this plan. And then, usually, we end up doing it. But then he's ready if anything goes wrong, um, which I, I love him. OK, so I was having a 40th party. And my mother-in-law is Miss Beaver, and she's married to a beaver. I really think, actually, his brother's not a beaver, so that's where he, they get a little of, of, of another personality. But um, I, so my brother, who's an otter, who, my family, my husband was like, we can be on the way to a restaurant, and we can just change in any minute. Like, no, we're not going there anymore. We're going to Spaghetti Factory, because that's what happens. Well, I called. My brother said, you're having a 40th party. Can I come? Can I come? Because he's super spontaneous. And I was like, sure, I'll call my mother-in-law. And so I called her the day before. I go, OK, Eileen, I know it's hard for change. I understand. But my brother just called. He wants to come up from Portland with his wife and um, come to the dinner you're putting on for me. Um, with our family, and I, I know it's hard because we've had this talk. She goes, well, I've already set the table, but I, I think we can do it. And I was like, I'm, I'm so proud of you. I know that's hard. So I've had to take it down. I drive them. They love accomplishment. OK, Beavers, raise your hand if you have a checklist right now. You have it, and you love it. Does it feel so good? Done. I did it. And just you can just do a little celebration dance when you, I don't know if you like to dance if you're a beaver. Um, there's my son and my, and my husband. And it's the sweetest picture of going to see beautiful places, of going to gardens and talking, and that their friendship is truly precious. Um, so beavers love, beavers love um, detailed games. And so I brought a game today, and what it is, is it's a bingo game, but on the back, it's facts. And so that you get to talk about the facts. So does anybody have a beaver in their house that's a child beaver? And they love facts, and they love nonfiction, and they love reading. So this is like, a spider is not an insect, but an arachnid. It has eight legs, and, it has eight legs and not six, unlike other insects. And he's just like, wow. This is so exciting. This game is so exciting. We haven't even put the bingo down yet. So that's really exciting. Um, then we have the Would You Rather is a really fun game. So would you, would you rather have an alarm clock that gives you a small electric shock when you wake up, or would you like one that pours a bucket of ice on you? And we do these like when we're waiting for food or all the time with people. Um, that's super fun. If your child um, struggles with temper, these are really good. And this is a good teaching, is it has different situations on it for temper tantrums. So um, talk it out. We're having a problem with a friend who doesn't seem to have enough time for you. Rather than get angry and yell at your friend, talk about the situation. Let's act it out. 
So we do a lot of role play with my autistic child, and it's awesome. And I just want to let you know, I just talked to his teacher in the program, and he's the king of social learning, she said. We call him the king because he knows what to do in social situations. And I'm like, yes, since the age of three, it's paying off. He knows social is. Um, have you ever spread a rumor or told lies, and it gets back to the person, and they're angry? What happened, and what did you do about it? This is teaching where they don't have to actually go through the situation. This is another game that's about social learning and you rate it one to five on appropriateness or severity, really good for preschoolers. And then this is just choices, just wacky choices and the kids can start making choices and problem solving, which is really great. Set is a really great game where you have to find two things that are different and one's the same or one thing that's different and two's the same or whatever. But he really likes this because it's a lot of problem solving. Hero tales are a must. Give your kids biographies. Aesop's fables when they're little, give them Aesop's. Read every one and have them memorize it and then write your own. And because my, my daughter one time, she's like, oh mom, that's a fox. That person I think is a fox. Yep, I think you're right. When we have foxes, we need to have really clear boundaries because we need to look for character before we put our hearts into people and know that they're gonna be faithful, they're gonna be safe places. And I agree, that person could be a fox. And they just need to learn to have some faithfulness, but they're not trustworthy. Or, oh, that person, I can tell that they're loyal, like this story. But the um, hero tales are great, and this one I like because it's actually character. So this is on strength, and then it talks about Samuel Morris, or it's on, um, so when we were working on a certain character quality, like thankfulness, then we would read about George Mueller or David Livingston. Um, our bi biographies at the school are fantastic. Um, and then read stories, so he, yeah. Oh, tons. I think in your library you have Aesop's Fables. Um, and um, and I do, my third graders write, actually all of my kids write Aesop's Fables in Latin. So they write them in Latin. Um, let's see. Here is when an otter and a beaver meet. And it's a great book. It's one of my favorites. Okay, so Mr. So golden retrievers and beavers worry. They have a lot of fear. And beavers worry that there's not enough. Not enough money, not enough time. Um, but he said, and now Mr. Murray worried some more about the new mouse living next door. His home is a shambles. His structure is poor. Well, I have never seen such confusion before. He's not doing it right. So he went over and he's living in a pumpkin. This is the otter. Woohoo! I'm going to live in a pumpkin. It's going to be so fun. And I just eat and do whatever I want. And so then at the end, I love it that the beaver, whose house is nice and warm because he lives in a teacup, says, he bundled up warmly and scurried next door. My teacup, dear Thumpkin, has room for one more. Thumpkin said, Willie is getting a mite chewy. So the two friends settled in for the night and made their beds and snuggled down tight. Mr. Murray said, Thumpkin, I'm worried, all right, for food just one. That's a horrible plight. Aw, Mr. Murray, don't fear. I got half my pumpkin. We'll eat it all year. So Mr. Murray, who worried too much, and Thumpkin, who worried too little, lived out their days in a cozy tea teapot and met somewhere just in the middle. This is what we need to have to have the to find the connection, is not looking at the negative, but understanding each other and finding um, uh, the balance with it. And, and um, I think that beavers are, the gift that I love about beavers is that they see the details beforehand. And the one thing that beavers can have is a critical. They can be really critical, and they can tell you all the things that went wrong, because in their mind, they're always talking about the things that are wrong. They, they have that mind that they're always looking for, oh, that's not right, that's not right, that's not right. Um, where my personality is, oh, that looks good, that looks good, that looks good. I, I always half full, and they're more of a half empty. And so just to find where that is, and I tell my husband, I, I, I want to hear how I can grow, but you only get one a day. Because if you do more than one, I feel defeated. So one a day, go for it, and I'll work on it. And um, I wouldn't be who I, what I am if it wasn't for my beaver husband and his family. Um, highlight one mistake at a time. 
actually, I don't tell my beavers necessarily who the mistake, where the mistake is. I said, I found something. I bet you can find it. And almost every time, they look back and they found it because it's their third time through. And so they would, um, they um, would find it. I have to say that if we look at the four personalities, though, beavers need to learn to take risks. Beavers need to invest in friendships. Beavers need to get out of the box. Otters need to work on looking for the details. Otters need to slow down, need to know that there is a, 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 an energy level that they need to make sure that they know if they have enough energy or time to be able to commit to things. Um, and allow, the, allow them to join you in the tasks. They love organizing things or having projects that they can do. They're critical thinkers, so ask them questions about critical thinking, like, why do you think that spiders make their webs that way? And why do you, like, my son and I watch bees fly and pollinate, and spiders make webs, and we just watch it leaves, and we just, we sit and just talk about it, of why, and, and he just asked me a question just the other day, and it was really good and insightful, so taking time to stop and, and like, wow, I never even thought about that before. So now what I want you to do is go across. So look at your personalities of your children and then go across and see what are, can you purposely do in the next taking time, to, a purposeful time for teaching to celebrate your child and to encourage your child. So why don't you write those down um, and I'll give you one minute so that you can be thinking And one more thing, will you, will you write about how you're going to connect with them this week? How do you want to connect with them this week, purposefully? Yes. I used to be really otter, like in high school, oh my gosh, ASV vice president, princess on the float, I was all over the place, right? <laughs> and I have learned to be more golden retriever and have compassion, and I've kind of gone away. I'm still pretty spontaneous, but I more like to listen. I really enjoy listening to people. So good job, you. So then in which situation, one, what fuels you? Where do you feel most comfortable? And what maybe personality don't you have? Even, I have three. So I have my lion, I have otter, and golden retriever. I don't have a lot of beavers, so that's where I need to work. But, but sometimes when people come to my classroom, like, you're so organized. It's because I'm not organized that I have to make a system to be organized. Does that make sense? So if you're whole, that's great. And don't be confused. You are who you are, and you're beautiful who you are. These are just a way to start seeing what glasses fit. And in different situations, I wear different glasses. Like when I'm counseling somebody, I'm a golden retriever. But if I'm putting on a party, otter is going on. And if I'm leading, I got my, I've got both my golden retriever and my lion because I want to come along those I'm leading, I want to nurture them, I want them to feel loved, and I'm going to lead forward. So you're just who you need to be. So then basically what I'm kind of getting from this is 
naturally, like when I was younger, I was a lion. Mm -hmm. But then over time, I've become more of the uh, uh, golden retriever is where I kind of went to. And then I started to become more of the questioner and the spreadsheet person. Fabulous. The water I have to work really hard at. Yeah. But I'm trying to figure out my kids now. And I can see tendencies of like otter and golden retriever in my daughter. Perfect. And my son is more of a lion. Um, I don't really see him being much of anything else because he's so young. Yeah. So I'm kind of struggling trying to figure out how do I fill their cups. Exactly. So, so you know you're missing the otter piece, OK? So talk to your daughter. Ask her questions about how she would be filled up in her otterness. So this is the piece you're missing is the otter piece. So just that is knowledge. I don't have a beaver piece, so son, <laughs> I gotta help you. I mean, talk to your dad about this part because, or you know, because I don't, I, I don't naturally think in details. I think big picture. I'm big vision. I'm not a detailed person. So then I know what I'm missing. So for my beaver boy or my husband, I gotta stop back. So beaver husband, his thing is um, be, be, be brief be bright, be gone. And so when I go to my husband, I concise it like way down than I do with my girlfriends. Like the story takes way shorter. <laughs> yeah, because he, did, he, he can't sustain for the, all the details of the, everything that happened. Um, really quick, Rachel, do you mind? I'll take the two minutes, yeah, you're if you don't mind, because I know we're wrapping up. Um, how many of you found a way you're going to connect with your kids, either through words or an experience? How many of you have that place in your house that's going to, you're going to make warm, happiness. Mine was tea party. Whenever I got the teacups, it meant I'm taking out time. For you, I had my stash of yummy treats, and we'd sit and have tea. Um, I try to take my kids out. It's probably every other month to Starbucks, or I take them to dinner, and I don't talk. I just ask questions. My mom did that for us, for my brother and I, and we were really, really close to my mom. And she'd take us out for like a three-course meal, and we would just talk and just like bleh, and they can't wait for it. So where are you doing those connections? It's gonna pay off when you have a teenager, and I know Karen will agree. And you make connection, your child will, you'll be a safe place and they'll come back to you. Questions, any other questions? Because I threw a lot at you today. I know this was your second. Did you get some new things? Okay, I hope so. Um, wow, you guys don't have any questions. You guys got it, yeah. They're not, so come on up here and you can see. Um, this book, I Wish You More, would be a great book to write a story. I wish you more hug, um, can I just do this real quick? I wish you more tippy toes than deep. I wish you more woo hoo than whoa. Okay, so Cri Christy, my, her daughter, uh, has, she, we have a connection. Can I tell the connection? Okay, so she has a special needs son and a brother. And my daughter has special needs son. And it stinks when the only sibling you have is special needs. Give me a break, God. Can I have a normal sibling? So they mentor each other. And Christy's, uh, we gave this to Christy's daughter who just had a baby. And it was so cute. She videotaped and she said, I wish you more give than take. And I wish you more. And she, she finished it. But this is life. There's give and take. There's ups and downs. There's deep and tippy toes. There's I wish you more hill than will than hill. This would be a great book to do with your kids because that's what life. I wish you more snowflakes than tongue. I wish you more pause than fast forward. I wish you more umbrella than rain. And so um, this is a really great book. But you can come up here and um, I'm going to just read this really quickly because I forgot to read it earlier and it's so good. Um, this says, this is what I see as a parenting. God pre-wired your infant. He pre he scripted your toddler's strengths. He set your teen on a trajectory. God gave you an 18-year research project. It is not 18 years. Ask my grandma. When she was 100 and her son was 70, she was still trying to figure him out. Um, ask yourself, your spouse, your friends, what sets this child apart? Childhood tendencies forecast adult abilities. Read them, discern them, affirm them, cheerlead them. You've been given a book with no title, read it. You've given a CD with no cover, listen to it. An island with no owner, explore it. Resist the urge to label. That's what I want to leave with. Don't label your child. Use this as a tool to know your child before you study. Attend carefully to the unique childhood of your child. On comma are the parents who attempt to learn these God-given abilities, but blessed are their children. So I try to go shut up and listen. 
be quiet and ask. And then a lot of times I'm like, oh, now I understand. Wow, I'm really glad I didn't go with what I thought the situation was about or who you were or how you're feeling. And almost, it's amazing when kids are out in the hallway with me and they start crying and I'm like, I don't need to even talk. They already feel badly about it and I need to give them compassion because they love their hearts. Let me let Rachel finish and then I'll be around if anybody has any individual questions. Does that sound great? Okay, thanks.